Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Real Hazardous. Today we're going to show you how we do a little preventative maintenance, a little prep on our roller guided rods. We use roller guided rods a lot for a lot of big game fishing, um, predominantly like high speed trolling for wahoo, but also some big dolphin. If you go for yellowfin, marlin, stuff like that, you may have a roller guided rod. Uh, they're really great. You know, they have uh, low friction because they can just roll and the line can just spin right over them. But if you don't take care of them, then they can corrode, get salt in them, you know, lock up, and then they don't roll. And then you kind of went the other way. You know, you'd be better off with a ceramic eye, something to dissipate heat better. So it could actually cause you to uh, lose fish if they're not maintained well. So today we're going to take apart the eyes and put some oil on them and then put them back together. That's all there is to it. So first what we're going to do is uh, you're going to need a couple flathead screwdrivers. It may vary depending on what you have, but commonly they're flathead screwdrivers. And then you're going to want some uh, oil and then maybe a Q-tip and a little wooden dowel if you have it to poke it through. And uh, I can even use a little roll of tape. What I'll do is I'll place that roll of tape under the eyes. And this is just to catch the screws and any pieces that may fall out so they don't roll all over the place. We'll then uh, loosen them up and we'll take the two screws out. They come out at either end. You may want a toothpick to kind of poke it out if they don't come out freely. Once you get those screws out, you're just gonna have to push that eye out of the um, kind of housing that holds it. The first two closest to the reel are probably the hardest ones to deal with, but they're not too bad. It kind of gets easier going from there. So then you're just gonna push the uh, roller guide out. And once you get that out, there is a sleeve inside of the roller. So use a toothpick or a small little dowel or something to just push that sleeve out. It comes out pretty easily when you maintain them. If you haven't done this in a while or ever, then it could be kind of difficult. You may need some, something like WD-40, some kind of oil lubricant, silicone to kind of break it out and free it up. But once you get that sleeve out, you're just gonna clean it off, get all the stuff off of it, any um, grease or dirt or old stuff, yuck, whatever. And then you're going to put oil back on top of it. So you're going to put oil on the sleeve and you're going to put oil on the inside of the roller as well. While you have the roller out, this is a good time to take a Q-tip and run it along the outside of the roller, you know, where your line is going to touch it. You want to make sure there's no nicks or anything. You know, some of that fuzz catches somewhere on the roller could mean there's a nick in it. You're probably most likely to see this at the tip. You know, if someone's has a bad habit of rolling the uh, snap swivel up into the tip, you know, that metal on metal, it could nick it or uh, cause some kind of problems. So this is a good time to check for that. So then you're going to put that sleeve back into the roller. You can put the roller back into the, to the housing on the rod, and then you're gonna take the screws, one's a screw and one's kind of a, an inside sleeve that's threaded for the screw, and you're gonna put some oil on that, on the outside of that as well. So now you're gonna take the post with the threading on the inside, and you're gonna run that through the roller and the sleeve and that whole assembly. It's going to be kind of tricky. You're going to have to line it up on your rod. You're going to have to play with it maybe. You may need like that Q-tip or a little wooden uh, rod that can kind of push it around a little. I prefer not to use like the screwdriver to move the roller around because you could nick it. But I guess if you're really careful, it can be done. I've seen some people do it. Once you get it lined up and you get that post through, then you're going to put the screw on the other side and tighten it down. Make sure you get it plenty tight. But be careful because on some roller guided rods, I've seen where if you get each of those two um, screws too tight together, it'll actually like clamp down on the roller and the roller won't roll. So when you've got it pretty tight, you're gonna wanna do a final check. I like to take a piece of rubber skirting from like an old lure, but you could use line or anything, any kind of string, and you're gonna run it through the roller, kind of pull it back and forth and just make sure your roller is spinning freely. If you're having to put a lot of pressure to do that, something's wrong. If it's not rolling at all, then something's definitely wrong. But that's all there is to it. You're just putting oil on those assemblies, on the bearings, 
uh, just so it can freely roll, making sure there's no corrosion, uh, no cracks in it, nothing bad that could affect your fishing. Uh, it's not the glamorous side of fishing, not the fun videos you probably like to see, but this is what you have to do to you know, be consistently successful. I mean, when you get a monster fish on, that is when it's really gonna test your tackle. You know, having, being well prepared, having good gear, you know, we'll change out snap swivels each year. Things like that are, are what's gonna get you those big fish, okay, rather than being that story of the big one that got away. Hope this video was helpful. If you guys have any questions, by all means, let me know. If you guys got any suggestions or tips, then uh, comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.